My dad almost unalived me and my mom, but she refused to press charges and insisted we let him back into our lives. I listened to her, but then he did it again. I came home from college one day to find my father drunk, towering over my mother in the kitchen and nailing down blows on her midsection. She had her arms wrapped around herself for protection, but he kept shoving them aside. I instantly dropped my bag and rushed over, and without thanking, slapped him on his temple. I then shoved him off of her and turned around to check if my mom was okay. While I was doing that, I forgot to pay attention to my dad, who had now picked up a chair. He swung it through the air, and it connected directly on my spine. I collapsed, and my dad picked me up by the collar. I proceeded to spit in his face and call him a sociopathic good-for-nothing motherfucker who deserves to die, and with I went for the low blow. I kneed him down there, and he instantly let go. He fell down and started wincing in pain. I once again went to check on my mother, but not even thirty seconds later my dad was back on his feet. He came from behind and put me in a chokehold. I felt my myself starting to lose air, but then I got a hold of a screwdriver that was on the counter and stabbed him in the arm with it. His grip loosened, and I was able to get free, but he was still standing. He took the screwdriver out and started swinging it at me. At that moment, the police knocked on our door. My mom answered the door, and by the time they came in, my dad once again had me on the floor. He was wailing down blows on my ribs, and they forcefully pulled him off. After the cops took my dad away, however, my mom refused to press charges, even though she had bruises all over her body body and had been crying just moments before, she wouldn't do it. Even though I too had sustained serious wounds and could have genuinely died, she refused. She kept repeating that he was sick and that he didn't mean it. I couldn't believe it. I begged her to let him stay in jail, but she wouldn't listen. That night, we went back and forth about him staying in jail, and I was scared that if she didn't press charges, he would come back to finish the job. My mom was all I had, and I couldn't lose her too. So, when she suggested that we ask for him to be sent to a psychiatric ward instead of prison. I went along with it. I hated it, but I didn't know what else to do. My dad was admitted to the psych ward, and for a while, things were quiet. My mom and I went back to our routine, and everything was normal. It was late when my mom came home one night. I hadn't thought much of it at first. She had a habit of staying out after work to run errands or meet with her friends from church, but something was off this time. I could tell by the way she slipped through the door all quietly and carefully. I was sitting at the kitchen table, going over some notes for an exam. The moment she saw me, she froze. She looked like a deer caught in headlights. I greeted her and asked where she had been, and she hesitated for a second too long. She then confessed that she went to go see Dad. She could see I was upset and begged me to give her a chance to explain. She said that he seemed much different now, and he had been getting a lot of help from the doctors. She said they've been working with him, and even said that if he kept up such good behavior, he would be released soon. I couldn't believe that she went up there without me. She could have been hurt or worse, but she told me that it wasn't like that. She wanted to see for herself how he was doing, and she could see he was really trying this time, and he apologized. She told me that he asked about me and said he missed his boy. He may have my mom and the doctors fooled, but there wasn't much getting to me. I knew that this was just another one of his stunts. He'd go crazy, apologize, and things would go back to normal for a couple of months until his next episode. This was a tale as old as their marriage. I didn't understand much growing up, but as I got older, I realized the pattern that he put my mom through. When I was a kid, I watched my mom getting ready. She was always beautiful, even when she was stressed or tired like she was that night. She was sitting at her vanity, putting on makeup to go to my grandparents' house for dinner. But there was something different this time, something my innocent mind couldn't comprehend. I asked her why her eyes looked like a raccoon, and she froze for a second. The brush in her hand stopped midair. She looked at me through the mirror. Her eyes were swollen and dark purple around the edges. She told me it was nothing, and that she just had allergies. I told her that maybe she should take some medicine to fix her eyes, and she said she would do so when we got back home. I didn't know much back then, but I knew the difference between an accident and when my dad got angry. He'd been in one of his moods earlier that week. I remember the yelling and the way his voice boomed through the house. He always found something to complain about, like dinner being too salty or the laundry not being folded the way he liked. Little things always set him off. Later that night, when we were sitting at my grandparents' table, everything seemed normal. My dad laughed, joked, and acted like the perfect husband in front of them, and my mom mom smiled along. I watched how her smile didn't quite reach her eyes and how she flinched when my dad reached across the table to pass her the bread. I knew something wasn't right back then, but I didn't know what. All I knew was that whenever my dad was angry, something bad happened, and my mom always tried to pretend like it didn't. Fast forward to now, mom went to see dad, and she thinks he's changed just because he told her what she wanted to hear, just as he did time and time again. I told her that he was a psychopath and that he knew exactly what to say to make her believe 
believe him. She started defending him, saying that I didn't know what I was talking about, and I didn't see the remorse in his eyes like she had seen. She swore up and down that he was getting better and wasn't the same person he was when they admitted him. I tried to explain once again that he was manipulating her. She doesn't see it because she doesn't want to. How many times did he have to hurt her before she got it? Tears formed in her eyes, and I realized what I said. I didn't mean to hurt her. That was the last thing I wanted to do, but she didn't understand. She said she just wanted to believe that he could change and that he wasn't beyond help, and I told her that I wanted to believe that she deserved better and that she'd stop putting herself in danger for him, but that didn't seem to be happening either. We stood there in silence for a long time. She wiped a tear from her cheek, but I could see that she wasn't backing down on this, and that's what terrified me the most. No matter what he did, she always believed he was worth saving. I told her again that I knew she loved him, but he wasn't safe, and if she kept going back to him, she would get hurt again. I told her that she couldn't save him and to stop trying. She didn't respond. She just sat there staring down at her hands, and in that moment, I realized that I might never get through to her. I told her that I'm not letting him back into our lives, and if he gets out, I'm not going to stand by and let him hurt her again. She shouldn't either. I walked out the front door and left her sitting there. A few months later, my mom got a call from the hospital. They were releasing my dad. They said he'd made progress and was doing better, so they had decided to let him go. I couldn't believe it. I tried to talk to my mom about it and make her see how dangerous he was, but she wouldn't hear it. She was so happy to have him back, and nothing I said could change her mind. When my dad came home, it was like nothing had ever happened. He was charming, sweet-talking my mom, apologizing for everything. He blamed it all on his mental illness, on the alcohol, on everything but himself, and my mom fell for it. She believed him when he said he'd changed and would never hurt us again, but I knew better. He hadn't changed. He was still the same monster. The tension in the house was unbearable. I couldn't stand to be around him and avoided him as much as I could, but it was only a matter of time before things exploded again. It didn't take long for the mask to slip. One night, we got into another argument. My dad had been drinking again, and I could see the anger building in him. He started yelling at me and called me everything but a child of God. He said I was worthless and that I'd never amount to anything, then said that I think I'm better than him just because I was going to college. I stayed quiet and hoped that he'd drop it if I didn't engage with him, but that seemed to only make him angrier. He took a step towards me and said I couldn't even look him in the eye. The alcohol on his breath burned my nostrils. I told him I was going to bed, and he shoved me, saying that I thought that I was tough. I started to walk to my room without a word when I felt something thick smack the back of my head. He had hit me with a beer bottle and charged at me. It was the same old routine, but this time, I didn't back down. My mom heard the commotion and ran to the living room. She tried to break us up, then he smacked her. She fell to the floor and held her face, silently screaming to herself. I looked over at her and felt rage rush throughout my body. I knocked my dad to the floor, and his drunken body couldn't get back up. He laid there, gasping for air. After that, I called the police again. This time, I pressed charges. I wasn't going to let my mom talk me out of it. My dad was dangerous, and he needed to be locked up. The court process was long and painful. My dad tried to manipulate everyone, even the judge, but the evidence was clear. There was no hiding what he'd done. There were scratches and bruises all over my body, and I had to go to the hospital to get a few pieces of glasses out of my head and stitches. My mother also had a bruise on her face from his slap. There was no coming back from this or fooling anyone this time. Our lawyer laid out the evidence methodically. Each charge, each incident of violence, and each police report over the years painted a clear picture. My dad wasn't just a man who'd had a bad moment. He was someone with a long, troubling past that was all right there in black and white. The judge, who had been somewhat passive until this point, leaned forward as she presented the history. Assault charges, domestic violence reports, and even a restraining order from a past relationship were documented. He had years of unchecked behavior. The judge took his time reviewing the criminal record and medical reports our lawyer submitted. The legal battle suddenly seemed much clearer. With the long-standing history of violence and psychological instability laid out before him, the judge's perspective shifted. Our lawyer included testimonies. There were statements from neighbors who had witnessed the violence, medical records of my mom's injuries, and even my own hospital visits, which added another layer to the case. With his history of violence and the weight of the evidence, the judge ordered that my father be committed to a psychiatric facility indefinitely. That's when my dad realized there would be no more apologies, second chances, or manipulation. This time, it was over. He broke down in the middle of the court. He pleaded for my mom to save him and looked to me for support. He begged the judge to take back his sentencing, and the police took him away in handcuffs. I was beyond relieved. I looked to my mom to hug her and celebrate, but instead of feeling relieved, my mom was devastated. She blamed me for everything. She said I'd ruined her life.
life and that I'd taken away the man she loved. She couldn't see that I'd saved her, that I'd saved both of us. She said that she never wanted to see me again and screamed at me in the middle of the courtroom. The judge slammed his gavel down to regain order in the court. We left, and when we got home, my mom disowned me. It broke my heart, but I had to walk away. I couldn't stay in a house where I wasn't wanted, where my own mother chose her abuser over me. My dad is gone for good, and my mom made her choice. I'm on my own now, trying to pick up the pieces of my life. Life without my mom wasn't something I had ever prepared for. Even though she had chosen him over me, it didn't make leaving any easier. I walked out of that house with nothing but a few clothes and the weight of a broken family on my shoulders. I stayed with a friend for a while and crashed on their couch until I could figure things out. At first, I didn't talk much. Everything felt like it had crumbled all at once. My dad was finally locked away, but the cost was my mom. She was the one person I thought would always be in my corner, no matter what. I had fought to protect her, even when it meant turning my back on her love for him. I get up early, head to classes, go to work, and come back to an empty space. My routine is the only thing that keeps me going. Sometimes, I wonder how my mom's doing, if she's lonely in that house, or if she regrets the things she said. But then I remembered the look in her eyes that day in court, and I knew I couldn't go back. Even if she called me tomorrow, I wouldn't know how to be her son again. I used to think I could save her, that if I just fought hard enough, stood my ground, or found the right words, my mom would finally see what I saw. For years, that hope kept me going, that one day, she'd realize I was right. But that day never came. I don't know exactly when it hit me. Maybe it was after months of silence, waiting for a phone call that never came. The truth is, you can't save people who don't want to be saved. I thought if I loved her enough and sacrificed enough of myself, I could pull her out of the mess she was in. But I was wrong. She didn't want to be saved, and there's nothing you can do about it. I don't hold it against her. Not anymore. I used to. But I see it now for what it is. She wasn't strong enough to let him go. She couldn't save herself, and I couldn't do it for her. 